Hey guys, it's Joe, and in this video I'm going to be properly showing you how to use the Platinum Digital Compressor in Logic. I recently uploaded a video briefly explaining each of the compressors and what instruments they work best with, and now I'll start uploading a video dedicated to each of them, going into real depth about how to use them properly and for what sounds. So this is the first one, Platinum Digital. This is probably the one you're most familiar with, it's the one you're greeted with when you open up the compressor and it's probably the one you use for quite a while before you really understood how to use compression as a whole. Now the Platinum Digital is actually really quite a well-rounded compressor. It's nothing fancy, but it does what a compressor should in that it's very good at leveling out the sounds, evening everything out, and bringing up some of those quieter parts. It works well on quite a lot of instruments, mostly soft sounds it works best on, but it can also be used on hard sounds to get some good results. It works on instruments with a wide range of frequencies, and things that you just kind of want to keep simple. When you're using this, you mostly want to use it with a soft knee, as I said, for those softer sounds, but I'll also be demonstrating how to use it with a hard knee for some harder sounds, such as the bass and the drums. One of the reasons that it works so well on those kind of plainer sounds, and one of the reasons it's nothing fancy, is that it doesn't really introduce any harmonics, it doesn't use any saturation, whereas things like the Studio VCA introduce quite a high level of it, so it sounds really crisp naturally when you apply it. Whereas the Platinum Digital doesn't do that, it's a very straightforward compressor. So I'll just walk you through all the things I've done on here, I'll be demonstrating it on the drums, acoustic guitar, bass and a synth. So I'll just play you this loop that I made just using some of Apple's loops and then go into detail about how I've done it. So let's just take a look at the backbone and that is the drums. So I've got a pretty straightforward drum compression setting on here. I've got four to one ratio, hard knee, quick attack and a medium long release. Now of course this is compressing the whole kit, so I've gone for a 4 to 1 ratio for that. If I'm using compression on all the individual parts, I'd likely use something different, but it's quite a good general kit compression. Got a hard knee, mostly to add impact to the kick and the snare. Quick attack, similar reason, to really bring out that kick and snare. And then I've had the release a little bit higher because it's quite a sparse sound and we want to hang on to those sparse noises a little bit longer. So let's just A-B it. So you can hear the kick is really punching in there and the snare is coming up a little bit more as well. Oh, I've also put on some soft distortion. So this is adding some saturation, but I've chosen to put that on. Whereas if I were using it on the Studio VCA, if I were to have that on, it would be even more saturation on top. So now we've got our sound, we can now compare it to like the Studio VCA or the Classic VCA just to see the difference between them. So it's a bit harder. The kick sounded really aggressive. There's a lot of punch on the Classic. Even compared to the Vintage or the Studio, sorry, it's even more. You can see, you can hear that it just has more color and more characteristics than the Platinum Digital. This is absolutely fine to use, but I'll explain more in a bit, certainly when we get to the bass about how we can use this. Next we'll have a look at the acoustic guitar, so we'll just A, B it. Now this one took me a little while to play around with properly, because I found that with the compression it just sounded a little bit lifeless when I was using a higher ratio. I think it's in a decent spot now, but it's something just to be careful of because we don't want to take the life away, we still want some, some kind of dynamics going on, but we just have to be careful with it. So I've gone for a 2.5 to 1 ratio on this, because I'm quite specific. A relatively soft knee, if anything I'd probably increase it a little bit more. Quite a quick attack, because it's very choppy kind of guitar line and then quite a short medium release and I've set this release as such because it's a, it's a very, as I said, a very choppy acoustic line I've kind of matched it with the rhythm so if we just watch the needle and listen you can see each time it's going back another chord's being played and I've got that quick attack because all the chords being played are very quick we want to get in there on the compression we, you know, the notes aren't around for long 
and we want to make sure our compressor is actually doing something. We'll just have a look at what it sounds like with an even softer knee as well. Hard knee, soft knee. So soft knee is it just does sound a little bit more open, a little bit more free. So I think when I had it on 0.3, that might still have been a little bit too hard for it. I think somewhere between 0.6 and 0.8 is quite nice, but it's entirely up to you for what you're using. The vintage FET sounds really, really nice on acoustic guitars as well, so let's just have a listen to that. You can hear all of that color in it as well. So that's always something to bear in mind too. Now we'll have a look at the bass. So I put this on it just to tame it a little bit more. It's really quite aggressive without it, I found. So if anything, I put this on to just tame it and bring it back a little bit and just even it out somewhat. So I put a three to one ratio on this. I've got a hard knee, quite a long attack, and then a very quick release. Now, I'm just gonna go into what I was wanted to mention earlier with the drums, is that the Platinum Digital is actually quite a good compressor to put on first if you wanted to use multi multiple compressors. So if you put this one on first in your chain, just to level everything out, and then maybe add on the Studio VCA, Classic VTA, or even the Vintage Opto afterwards, to give the sound a bit more color and a bit more characteristic, that's a good idea to do. It's just leveling it out first of all, which is what you want from the compression in the first place. But we'll just jump back into doing this now. I'll explain the attack and release a bit. So I've got quite a long attack. Anywhere between 50 and 100 is actually really quite nice on bass because you're not cutting it off. It's still sounding quite natural. And with the quick release, Again, it just makes it sound a bit more natural. It's kind of going away nice and quickly. It's not hanging around for too long. So I'm just gonna swap these around a little bit. And you're still bringing that punch out of it, which is really, really nice. Again, just gonna compare it to the VCA and I'm gonna compare it to the Vintage Opto as well. It's one of my favorites for bass. So the Vintage Opto does sound really nice with it, it adds a lot of warmth to it I find. And I'm sure as you noticed just now I had to change the threshold when I got to the Vintage Opto and some of the compressors do require a different amount of input which is why but I'll cover that when I get to these compressors, it's not too relevant at the moment. And lastly we have this synth. So again, I've just used this to tame it a little bit more. It's just leveled it out really quite nicely. I've got a 2.6 to one ratio on this, really soft knee, medium kind of attack, and a quick release again. So a nice soft ratio for this, it keeps it natural. Same with the attack and release, because although the sound is quite constant, as you can see down here, we still have peaks and dips as well that we still kind of want to level out a bit. And they don't last for too long either. And we want the attack and release to kind of reflect that. We've got a really soft knee as well, so again, it's just gonna be really smoothing it out. It's not an aggressive sound. We want it nice and smooth and not too jumpy. Again, vintage FET sounds lovely with this. Adds all that color and all those characteristics. Similarly, actually with the studio FET, but you need some more aggressive settings, or less aggressive, sorry. You can hear it's just squashing it a bit too much there. Because that's the thing as well, because if you're jumping in between different compressors to see what works, they may need different settings. So although, yeah, I've jumped to the Studio FPT here, it didn't sound as good. If I were to play around with it, I could essentially achieve a better result. So it's just worth looking into it instead of just thinking, oh, that doesn't sound as good, I'll go to the next one. Play around with each of them a little bit for sure. So all in all, the Platinum Digital is actually really quite a good compressor. It's very well-rounded. It works with 
a wide variety of instruments and sounds as I said at the beginning instruments with large range of frequencies things that you just want to level out more soft sounds than harsh for sure but you can still achieve good results if you're using them on harder harsher sounds definitely use it on instruments you kind of want to keep the same or as the first compressor in your chain of compression it works really really well I hope you found this video useful and if you have any questions please leave a comment or contact me via my website thanks a lot for watching cheers